This is Fujifilm's brand new Instax Mini 12 Instant Camera. Could this be the best budget instant analog camera around? Let's take a look. Hi everyone, welcome to Pal the Tech. Fujifilm just released their latest Instax Mini camera, the Mini 12. With each new release, they continue to refine existing features and also to add new conveniences. Before I go any further, let's get a disclaimer out of the way. Fujifilm did send this camera over to my studio here for me to test and to provide my thoughts. However, they had no involvement in this video, nor did they sponsor, nor did they pay for this video. My opinion is my own, and they were not allowed to see the video until right now when it's been publicly released. This is as simple of a camera as you can get. Let's in fact talk about what it doesn't have. There's no USB connections. There's no dedicated app, you know, to control it. There are no SD card slots. There's no detachable lenses. There's no focus ring. There's no exposure controls. There's no real camera settings of any kind on it. The idea here is that you can hand off this thing to any land mammal on planet Earth, and they should immediately be able to begin shooting photos with it. Also, the photos are not stored anywhere. They're simply printed out as soon as you press the shutter release button. It's your one copy of the photo. You can't come back later on to the camera and print out another copy of your photo like you could with Fujifilm's mini Evo camera. And in some ways, that's kind of cool. I mean, talk about having a camera that puts you right in the moment. You know, that. This is exactly like the old Polaroids from the 1970s. It's all about taking the photo, printing the photo immediately, boom, right in the moment, and then most likely handing it off to one of your friends as a keepsake. I should point out that Fujifilm also has released on the same day as this camera, a brand new smartphone app called Instax Up. The idea behind this app apparently is that it will work with photos across all other Instax apps and provide better organization and storage. I may review that app in a future video, but for the purposes of today's review, just know that you don't really connect this camera to any kind of an app. The camera comes in five colors, blossom pink, mint green, clay white, lilac purple, and pastel blue. This is the lilac purple version. Inside the box, you get a little wrist strap first thing right when you open it. And they also include two AA batteries. Remember, there is no USB chargeable battery on this thing, so you use AA batteries for power. And of course, there's the camera itself. The camera is made out of plastic, and it is a bit on the bulky side. It's meant to be held vertically, although you can take photos horizontally with it. I did notice that it is a bit slippery, and I think adding some kind of rubber or silicone type grip would have been handy. The shutter release button is on the front, and it's aligned with a bump on the back so that it fits in your hand just like this when you're holding it vertically. There is a viewfinder as well as an automatic flash on the front, while the rear of the camera is where you load the film. It takes standard Instax mini film, which is usually sold in two packs with 10 exposures each pack. Also on the back of the camera is a little plastic numerical counter that tells you how many photos you've taken so far. The side of the camera has a slot right where the photo is ejected as soon as you press the shutter release button and take the picture. The camera itself weighs in at a little over a half a pound and it's approximately four by 2.6 by 4.8 inches. It contains a two element length lens with a 60 millimeter focal length. There's a 0.37 times image finder that contains a target spot that helps you tell the camera where to focus. Speaking of focus, the minimum focus distance for this camera is 11.8 inches, but there is a feature called close-up mode that requires a specific minimum and maximum range of 11.8 inches to 19.7 inches. We'll talk about close-up mode in just a second. The camera shoots at ISO 8 800 with automatic exposure control. And interestingly, it uses an electronic shutter that ranges from one half a second all the way up to one 250th of a second. The flash on the front of the camera constantly fires when you take a photo and it has a seven second recycle time with a range of anywhere from 11.8 inches up to 7.2 feet of distance. It is very easy to load film into this camera. You simply line up the two yellow strips and then you drop the film pack right in. 
the camera will then eject a black protector on the very first picture that you discard. And that's something to keep in mind. So when you first load a film pack into the camera, don't then immediately go and take your incredible bucket list shot because the very first thing that's gonna come out of the camera is that black throwaway cover, right? So what you gotta do is make it a habit when you load new film into the camera, as soon as you close the back of your camera, take that shot, take out that discarded cover, throw it away, and get that out of the way before you go out shooting with it. After that, you're good to go, and each film pack has 10 photos. Once you actually take a photo, it takes approximately 90 seconds for the image to be fully developed. And the camera itself has an automatic feature to shut itself down after five minutes. You turn on the camera by twisting the plastic lens from the off to the on position. And there's also an option, you see it right here, for close up. And that's part of the new features for the Instax Mini 12 that I'm gonna discuss now. There are two main features in the Mini 12 over prior models. The first is an automatic flash control that optimizes image quality in both bright and low light conditions. Overall, I found this to be the case in my testing and the flash certainly worked much better than the old Polaroids of the 1970s, right? That gave you that flash in the face sort of look. Here it's a bit more balanced as the camera is automatically sensing how much exposure to calculate with regard to the flash. Another new feature of the Mini 12 is what's called parallax correction. And this is all about the camera being able to take a perfectly centered photo. Now, as you can see right here on the front of the camera, just above the lens opening, there is a small mirror. This is the selfie mirror. Of course, when taking a selfie, it's pretty much impossible if you don't have either a flip around LCD screen or perhaps your phone to be able to know that if you're perfectly centered in the image or not. Apparently, Fujifilm has solved this problem with a technology called parallax correction, whereby when you put the lens in close-up mode, right, rotate the dial to close-up mode, and then you go and you take a selfie, the camera will automatically sense that and center the photo. I tested this out in a number of situations, and I found for the most part, it works pretty well. I tried holding the camera at different angles to fool it. There were a few misses, but for the most part, it did do a fairly good job of keeping me in the center. <laughs> looks like a mugshot. It seemed to do better for my wife, but of course she looks a lot better on film than I do, that's for sure. It's not perfect, but it's an interesting feature that I actually would like to see advanced and implemented in other cameras as an option. What more can you really say about this? Overall, this is a fun camera to use, and you certainly don't buy this thing for image quality or color rendering. It doesn't even come close to what a regular camera can do in that regard or even a smartphone for that matter. If you are wanting more of a hybrid camera that both prints photos as well as allows you to keep a digital copy with all the benefits of photo editing and online sharing, then you may want to consider the Mini Evo instead. I have a full video on that camera, so be sure to check it out. I will leave a link to that video in the description below this video. However, for a drop dead easy way to take photos of your friends or just shoot selfies right immediately and have those printed photos in the moment, this camera does the job very well. And it's definitely worth considering. I will leave a link down below where you can check it out. Well, that wraps up today's video. Thank you so much for watching, and I really hope you found the video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. I will see you again in a new video very soon. Take care.